Welcome back, everyone. Current stats show there are more than 202 million people worldwide wearing smartwatches, so more than 2 million. But your Fitbit and Apple Watch can do so much more than relay your messages, play music, or track your steps. Whether it's too fast or too slow, when a heartbeat is offbeat, it might mean trouble. Patients that develop atrial fibrillation can have pretty severe consequences, specifically as it relates to stroke. But you might already be using one of the newest tools in the fight against AFib, your smartwatch. Patients now have the ability of recording arrhythmias real time. A Stanford study of 400,000 people found Apple Watches were able to correctly identify 84% of cases of AFib. A smartwatch also helps doctors monitor patients pre- and post-op. Which will track step counts, stride length, uh, heart rate, uh, and a variety of other data points that we don't normally track as a surgeon. Dr. Jeffrey DeClaire is part of an Apple Watch study that gives him daily real-time data on his patients before and after knee replacements. A month before surgery, they started sending me educational information as well as exercises to do and they track how you're doing with your exercises. And diabetics like Cindy Stevens Bossard can monitor glucose levels without that dreaded pinprick blood test. So when I'm going too high, my watch will ding, and then when I'm going too low, it'll also ding. And other studies show wearable devices might also be able to catch other illnesses like the common cold, the flu, even Lyme disease. This is actually something that is in my own practice, directly impacting care. So smartwatches are also becoming very popular for elderly family members, as most have the technology that can call 911 if they take a fall. So now the tech is being used so frequently that the doctor points out that the focus really needs to be on securing your health information and making sure that it is compliant and consistent throughout the healthcare industry.